Good morning. It's Wednesday, the 31st of July, 2024. It is going to be an extremely hot and uncomfortable day here in Northeast Iowa. Especially if you're out of the fair today, do pay attention to the weather. Stay yourself hydrated. Keep cool. Find shade if you need it. Uh, don't stay out in the heat too long. Don't get overextended. Don't get heat exhausted. A reminder of worship services is coming Sunday, 8.30 at 1st and 10.30 at St. Paul's. Services both will have Holy Communion and will be live streamed. Again, the Clayton County Fair is going on through Sunday. I hope you have a chance to go out and enjoy the fair. It is always a fun experience, so I hope you have a chance to be there. I want to look at briefly some readings from Romans this morning. The first is from uh, For All the Saints, the devotional book that I use. This is from Romans chapter 14. Then let no one pass judgment on another, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean of itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. If your brother, being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by all. Let us then pursue what makes for peace, for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything, indeed, is clean. But it is wrong for anyone who to make others fall by what he eats. It is right not to eat meat or drink or wine. Do not make anything a stumbling block for your brother. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Happy is he who has no reason to judge himself for what he approves. But he who has doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not act from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. There is a word I've used before, and I want you to hear it again and hopefully um, remember it. The word is adiaphra, a very good Lutheran word, although it comes to us from the Greek. And it literally means things that are indifferent. And by that, what we mean is within the body of Christ, within the church, there are things that we do, while they may be important, are not necessary to salvation. And so, therefore, they are indifferent things. An example of that is I always make the sign of the cross in worship. At the beginning of worship, at the end of worship, uh, various times when I hear the name of the Trinity invoked, I will make the sign of the cross. It is a Christian and appropriate thing to do. It would be wrong for me to insist the entire congregation must make the sign of the cross. You are free to do that and you are free not to do that. It is adiaphra in that whether you make the sign of the cross or not, your salvation does not depend upon that. Within the body of Christ, we strive to do those things that help build up the body. And that becomes a challenge at times because we don't always agree on what things are indifferent and what things are essential. And it's a very helpful distinction to make. First and foremost, the very basics of the Christian faith, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, salvation by grace through faith, the truth about the Holy Trinity, that there is only one God. These things are not up for debate. Those are not indifferent. They are not adiaphra. The death and the resurrection of Jesus is the core of our faith. And therefore, those things we do not yield upon. The nature and the efficacy of the sacraments we do not yield upon. Baptism is not merely a symbol. It is indeed a dying and rising with Christ, and salvation is given through it. The same with the Lord's Supper. It is the true body and blood of Christ, given with, in, and under the bread and the wine of Holy Communion, given for the forgiveness of sins, and as Luther says, where there are forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. That is not adiaphra. Those things we must cling to. We must cling to them because they are at the core of the faith. They are what ensure that those who hear and receive these gifts are receiving the promised forgiveness, life, and salvation. 
whether or not we make the sign of the cross, whether or not we have a specific order of worship, whether or not we have a dress code in church, all of those things, while maybe important, are not necessarily important for salvation. And of course, you could argue that someone could come along and say, well, then they would argue about everything that even things that might be regarded as sinful could be considered adiaphora. And of course, Paul addresses that very quickly in Romans chapter 6, where he says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Sin is never adiaphora. And while we may dis disagree on certain things as to whether they're sinful or not, the key here is that sin is never to be a part of the Christian life, at least not intentional sin. We are going to struggle with sin all of our lives, and that's going to be an ongoing challenge. But because we are baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we not only have the forgiveness of sins, but we have the ability by the Holy Spirit to war against our sins. And so it is not adiaphora for someone to come along and say, because I am a Christian, because you must be careful about what you do and say so that I don't stumble, my sin is perfectly acceptable. And of course, that's nonsense. The church understands that matters of indifference do not pertain to salvation. And sin is an issue with salvation. A person who loves his sin, who clings to his sin, who insists on his sin, is endangering his salvation. And it is the Christian's responsibility to admonish that person. We do not make judgments on people's eternal salvation, but if we see a brother or sister straying from Christ, it is important that we admonish them, that we warn them that they're going the wrong way. That is not adiaphora. That is a part of Christian love and care for the neighbor. So let us be attentive to how we live among one another. Let us be thankful for the gifts that God gives to his church, the variety of gifts, the varieties of ways of expressing them. Let us not get caught up in the minutia or the insignificant details of Christian life or worship. Those things that might be important to us may not be important to our neighbor. And let us not insist that they become important to our neighbor. If over time they can see that what we do is a blessing and helps them love Christ more, then well and good. If it gets in the way of their serving Jesus, then we need to be thoughtful about our asking of it. But also let us be clear that anything that leads one to sin is a matter of salvation. And therefore, we must be careful on those grounds. Love one another as Christ has loved you. Live in Christ as well as you are able, guided by the Holy Spirit so that we grow day and day more into our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we have the freedom to live as Christians, worshiping you and praising you and serving you in our variety of ways, that we have the freedom of expression in these things. Help us also to have the wisdom and the insight to see where those things that we say and do might border into sin, harming ourselves, our neighbor, and offensive to you. Help us to let go of those sins. Help us to admonish our brothers and sisters as they stray from the Lord, to bring them back to the goodness and the grace and mercy that you are. Help us to live every day as thoughtful, intentional Christians, serving you and the neighbor in the world. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good rest of the day. As always, I hope to see you all again tomorrow. And until then, goodbye now.